Hello everyone, this is Amiti Sensei. Today I want to show you how to make stylish icons using Illustrator for iPad. These sorts of icons are used all the time in documents, in web design, or even in flyers and posters. So I want to give you guys some quick tips on how to make them. Illustrator has this shape tool that makes it easy to make these icons. And even if you want to make basic icons, you can easily do that on an iPad. This tutorial is meant for beginners as well, so please watch and give it a try. Let's get into it! When you start with Illustrator, go to the Network button in the bottom left. For the canvas size, we are going to use Web Large today, but really anything is fine. Just choose the size you like. As for Illustrator's features, we have the tool panel on the left. This is where you find your pencil, pen, and text tools. On the right, we have the property panel. This is where you can apply layers, combine shapes, and change text settings and things like that. What we will mainly be using today is the shape tool. It's this square button here. When you press it, squares, circles, and triangles will show up. Let's start with a circle and make a cloud icon. Here the bottom is a color panel. The top circle is a fill color, while the bottom color is a line color. We don't need this right now, so we just cross it out and choose our color using the top circle. Let me use orange today to make it clear. We are going to fit a few big circles on the screen now. When you want to make a perfect circle, there is a round button on the bottom left that's called the touch shortcut. If you hold it while you're drawing, it keeps your circle perfect. And when you want to copy something, you just press the copy button. It's the second from the right in this bottom part here. And another of the same shape will show up. We are going to make this one a little bigger and then overlap the two. After that, we are going to make one more copy and adjust the sizes. Do this four times so that you have four perfect circles overlapping like this. Getting the positions and proportions just right might be difficult, so by all means have a diagram or picture handy to look at while you're working. You can search cloud icon online and a bunch of them will pop up. After we're finished with that, we're going to switch to the square tool and make the bottom part. If you overlap the square just right, you can see it starts looking like a cloud. Now we've got the basic shape done. Right now it's all separate, so we're going to fuse it all together. To do that, we first lock all of the shapes at once, like this. Then on the right hand side, there's a button labeled with two squares overlapping. We are going to press this and then choose the option at the very top, combine everything. This makes the entire thing one shape that you can move around. And even though they're combined, you can still double tap and move the separate parts around. It's not all one path yet, so to combine it further, we select it all and then choose the Convert to Pass option at the bottom of the Combine Bottom menu. In this way, what was before a bunch of individual shapes is now one single path. This allows us to move lines around and shift down cut points to change the shape. Now that our cloud icon is done, we are going to move on to a moon icon. We are going to use the shape tool and make one perfect circle. We will then copy the circle just like before from the bottom right and change the color of the circle at the top to make it clear. Now we have two perfect circles overlapping here. We are going to cut those out. To do that we select both at the same time like before and then pick the second option in the Combine menu label Cutout Front Object. This allows us to cut out the top circle and make something that looks like a moon. But we can still move the two parts separately like before, so let's convert to pass again. That's the bottom option in the Combine menu. Press it and what was once the two shapes become a single path. Then we can move the anchor points around by double touching too. We can't move the individual shapes anymore. If you're okay with how it looks, go ahead and press convert to pass. Next up is our sun icon. 
Of course, the circle in the middle is pretty easy, but what about the sun rays coming out? This is a little tricky, so I will show you how to do it. First, with the square tool, we are going to make a long, thin bar shape like this. When you double tap this, you will be able to fiddle with the anchor points. Can you see the four circles attached? If you press and drag this with your Apple Pencil, it will round out the corners for you. Just make a long, thin, rounded bar shape like this. Now we want to spread these around the middle circle nicely, and for that there is a great feature called Repeat Grid, which is what we are going to use. With the bar we just made selected, press the Repeat option at the bottom right, and choose the Radio option. This copies the bars really nicely. We are going to bring these to the middle of the circle, double tap them, and adjust the position. With that, is this the middle? I think it's about the right position. We just made our sun icon. It's simple and easy. By the way, this repeat radio option displays an arrow on the right. Slide it and you can adjust the number of bars. Double tap and you can adjust all of the bars at the same time. This is really useful so please remember. This feature is called Repeat Grid. Now that we've finished three icons, I'm going to show you how to make the outlines into those fancy gradients you saw at the beginning of the video. Let's start with the cloud icon. Select it, and at the bottom left there is an arrow button which switches between the line and fill. Press it, and the lines become orange while the fill color becomes white. Then we press the option that's second from the left in the common actions to adjust the line thickness by sliding. By the way, you can also change the line thickness by going to the bottom of the property panel on the right too. Either way is fine, but I think the option that pops up at the bottom when you pick something is a bit easier to use. Then we adjust the line thickness for the sun too. Just change the middle circle fill to line and leave the rest of it as it is. Next we are going to take these shapes and turn them into outlines. This might be a bit tough, but for example, take a look at the cloud icon. If you make it smaller like this, it really becomes really cramped. There's no empty space and when you zoom out, you can't really tell what it is. Now if you make it bigger, the lines get really thin and it starts to look kind of ugly. The point of changing them into outline is to fix this. It makes it so that all the lines get thicker or thinner the same way as you adjust them. So how do we do it? Choose the cloud, press the button forth from the bottom of the right for the object panel, and select dissolve group. Once you do that, this create path outline option will be available and we'll select it. That's it! The line data from before is now color data. If you double tap it, you can see that you can move the anchor points. Because it's color and no lines, if you try to make it smaller like before, it doesn't scrunch up. Can you see? You can see that it's a cloud, no matter how small it is. And even if you make it bigger, the line will stay constant relative to the shape. This proves that it's an outline now. Let's do this for each one. And with that we are finished. We made them all into path outlines, so no matter how big or small we make them, the line thickness all changed together. For the sun though, the middle circle and our repeat grid part on the outside have gotten separated, so I want to make it one object again. We just select everything and pick the second option from the object panel on the right side. This is called make composite path. 
This makes the sun icon into a single piece of path data. If you look at the layer section, you can see that it's now a composite path. Now to change the colors, select the shape and use the color wheel, or press the gradation tab at the right, and select the left tab below that says linear gradation. Can you see that when you do it, this line appears in the middle of the shape? By changing the angle of this line, you can adjust the position of the gradation. We can pick the yellow dot at the end of the line here and change the color. And do the same with the other dot at the bottom left. Once we are done with the gradation, we will go to the swatch section at the bottom of the color wheel and press the plus button. This will save the current color gradation for us. So if, for example, you wanted to put the same gradation on the moon icon, you can just select it, press the gradation in the swatch section, and you can see that it gets applied. This way you can make all the gradations match across the icons, which looks really pretty. And now it seems like we're done. How was it? I think it's pretty straightforward. But from now on, we're going to apply our skills by adding a background and some decorations. So if you're looking for a challenge, please give this a try. For our fourth icon, we are going to make a rain one. If we just add some lines to this cloud mark here, we can make it look like rain. Let's put our new skills to use. Next, we are going to make a partly sunny icon. We can do it by combining our sun mark and cloud mark. If there are any parts you don't need, you can just double tap and delete them. We will just remove those extra lines from the sun. And once you are all the two, we are going to combine them. Select both at the same time, and then choose make composite path again. This allows us to make this icon here with the cloud and the sun put together. Finally, we are going to end by making a lightning icon. For the lightning, we are going to use this pen tool and just move all the points around one by one. I believe this is something anyone can do, so please give it a try.
For the final touches, I think adding a background will make it look more stylish. So let's do that now. Just copy the background, select the copy, and choose a picture you downloaded to drop in. This will pass the picture within the frame, and all we need to do is adjust the position, and we are done. That's all for today. How was it? Were you able to do it all? The last part might be a bit difficult, but the sun, clouds, and moon icons were pretty simple. You can do them just by using the shape tool. So, everyone who's watching this tutorial, please give it a try. To say we can go to the save option at the top right, and you can choose your format, ping, AI, and so on. And you can send it to others too. So, this is how you save your work. Okay, that's the end of this video. If you like or enjoy this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks of iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!